Gotta grab myself some zip ties. Wherever my little bag. I saw something burning. Wherever my little bag of zip ties went. I found them. You're gonna need these. Just warning you for what we're about to do, which you've already seen in the video, so. Let's go check it out. And why did I say you're gonna need these? Well, as you saw in the video title, we're gonna be having some fun. Boom. We're doing that. All right, so on the Mega Squirt Harness, easiest thing to start out with is your five grounds. I just got them all and zip tied them together, so acting like this, that's one big wire. Um, on the your EJ22 harness, you have a ground, like a whole bunch of grounds to go into one thing uh, right here. You can splice these, splice these into there, or just put these all on like a ring like this and then you could just put it to the same area it's a good ground location or you could put it somewhere else all right so next i'll grab the pence and put that up there we're gonna wire up the injector bank so let me i need someone to set the camera but um the firing order for a Subaru is one, three, four, two. All right. Um, the best way to wire up uh, injector banks, especially on the EJ22s, this is just uh, my preference is go one and four to bank one, three and two to bank two. Um, so basically like you have on here or it actually says on here injector bank one injector bank two see one and four are inject here actually and let me tell you what the positions of the uh, cylinders are so let's say you're standing right here here's a little stick figure and you're looking at the car in this direction your engine is facing towards you like your intercooler and stuff is right right there and then your engine and then uh, driver side I'll put a steering wheel yeah that's an amazing steering wheel steering wheel and then passenger and then your car basically look at that beautiful car um, and here's your engine bay alright well inside your engine if you're looking at it it's gonna be one is up here three is down here well, a two, almost wrote four. Two is right there, four is right there. So it goes from back, one, two, three, four. That's it. Um, I hope you guys can see that clearly. I wonder if the camera is even focusing. But, uh, yeah, it's just one, two, and then you come down, three, four. So back to this. Basically, you're going to take inject injector bank one, which is, what color is that? blue injector bank one I'm guessing it's these two yes injector yeah bank one are these two so if you want you can put a zip tie around those which I'm gonna do right now alright so I, I was watching I'm, I'm watching the video as I do this and I'm basically guessing throughout all of this so if I were you I wouldn't do anything that I'm doing but basically you can take uh, let me go grab my injectors real fast all right, here are two of my 1,000 cc injectors. We're gonna put these on injector bank one. Now, I am using my original, I'm incorporating my Mega Squirt into my, oh dear, into my original wiring harness. Uh, why is this? It's because I don't feel like redoing my whole fuel, uh, fuse box and relay on all that stuff. So I'm keeping the original fuse box and everything, so when you turn it on, you know, it turns on your fuel, fuel pump, your ignition coils get their uh, power, all everything you need power gets power. So I don't have to worry about that. That's one step out of the way. Um, wow, that is nasty in there. I'm pretty sure this is all the grounds. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's all the grounds. But um, basically, you're just going to take, what are these? That's not... That's your crank angle sensor. You don't need that yet. You need this. Let's undo this real fast. You need this side, which is injector one, injector two. Well, I, I don't know. I'm just 
like counting the, the plugs. And then this side, which is, it has three plugs on it, but actually the only one that are injectors are these two. This is your crank angle sensor. So put that to the side. So basically, these are what we're gonna be messing with, these four plugs. So real quick, I wanted to go over on the injector side, I mean on the power side, all these red wires are not actually going to be red on your original harness, but they are going to be all the same color. Because on injectors, there's always power running to them, which the power keeps them closed, and the second the power is broke, they spring open. Like right now, I'm pretty sure this is open. Well, yeah, it's, it's open because there's no power going to them. But, um, so yeah, that's how those work. So your injectors are always going to be they're always going to have a uh, power side to them and basically you just are going to come back here please come back here please oh, oh my lord all you're going to do is keep the power wire which on this one it's yellow yellow there yellow there yellow and yellow and you're going to cut the ground and I'm pretty sure splice it into here I'm going to watch a little bit more but um yeah, cut it like back here and just run it from here going straight in your mega squirt. I cut back on the the shields a little bit so I can get better access to the wires. And the wires are looking a lot better down there. So see, we have power and then your ground. Now, we need to find out uh, which injector goes to which one on your firing order. And then just splice that into your injector bank. And uh, yeah, that's all you got to do. I have determined that this side with this random plug that literally does absolutely nothing or it actually does something and mine's just <laughs> ripped apart. Um, this is the right side of the engine. So this is, what is it? This is uh, injector 2 and 4. So I'm guessing this is injector 2, this is injector 4, and this is your camshaft uh, angle sensor. So injector 2 and 4 um, actually are not in the same bank, so it's actually a injector 2, what is it, injector 2 and injector 3, where's the other side, get all of this out of here, alright, here's your other side, injector, t I, I need to find out, oh, this is such a pain, this really is such a pain, but anyways, yeah, just find out what injector 2 and injector 4 is. Um, I'm thinking... Oh, which way does this go? I should probably... I'm gonna, I should, I'm gonna go over to my head and check it out and see which way this goes. I have soon realized that the actual injector banks for the car is color-coded. So, injector bank 1... Now, injector bank 2 is black. Injector bank 1 is gray. See? Injector 1... Injector 3, Injector 2, Injector 4. So, we're going to take Injector 1, and Injector 1 goes in Bank 1. Yeah, Injector 1, right? Yeah, Injector 1, we're going to cut this brown wire right here. That brown wire. Once you cut that wire, uh, get like a, cut the end off and make it so you can attach it to your um, wiring harness. And I'm going to go grab some butt caps because I hate using the, you slide it on, crimp it, slide the wire into the other side, crimp it. I like the twist caps so much better. It's so much easier. Got my mass load of butt connectors here. So we're going to take the small blue butt connector and we're going to take, I can move this. We're going to take one of the wires from our injector bank, take off the cap and all we're going to do splice it right into there just like that that injector is done and you're gonna use this wire and go to the other side with that and you're also, you're gonna have to cut like I put a zip tie there and there's a zip tie there yeah you're gonna have to cut all that because all this is gonna have to expand over this so uh, I'm gonna cut that and I'm gonna wire this wire up real fast there we go injector one done injector two done now I am gonna like go like tape that down with the electrical tape and then I'm gonna uh, use uh, zip ties and hold it on the original harness later on I will get more of this like concealer tube or I might even stick the original stuff inside the concealer tube but I'm gonna make it look 
good later on but first I'm just wiring this up now and then I'm gonna see how it works out on the engine later when it gets finished so all right let's do the other injectors now this has already become a wire a huge wire mess but I got both injectors wired up uh, all the grounds have been wired these are actually just ground wires but they're like signaled ground wires it's it's complicated but anyways yeah so that's all done uh, next we're gonna move on to the crankshaft angle sensor which is this bad boy right here oh and it's broke what do you know I might have, I'll have to find a way to fix that because we're actually cutting this entire thing right here because we need to use the ground and the uh, positive side but yeah so I'm gonna fix this little issue and then I'll get back to you when I'm ready to start the crimping like doing that stuff. I just wanted to point out real fast if you want to buy a Mega Squirt 3 um, you can buy them on eBay which I'm I, mine's gonna be ordered off of I'm ordering a new amplifier and then here's a Mega Squirt MS3 uh, for $530 plus $49 shipping. I'm actually thinking about ordering this one, this Mega Squirt 3 EMS system. These are already pre-assembled because I'm completely retarded and don't know how to assemble these myself. Um, but yeah, so this is the uh, MS3. This is by DIY Auto-Tune. I've seen these all over YouTube, like uh, Ricer Miata's videos. He bought one of these. Every uh, Let's see a few others like just a few other famous youtubers i i can't really um uh, remember them right now but they pre-assemble them and then they sell them for a lot more money even though it took them probably 20 minutes to assemble this so uh yeah just um there's t pretty sure there's two different ones one that comes with a, an extra board that you can do, but I'm gonna do some more research about that, but I'm still doing this, uh, so I'll get back to you in a second. So, real fast, you wanna cut off your crankshaft position sensor from your original harness and uh, remove this sheath that's on it, and I'm gonna do that real fast. You wanna grab your, the shielded um, twisted pair, which is this pair right here, cut it, Cut the ground that runs through here that keeps us grounded really well. Um, and get two wires that are exposed and uh, expose them. Expose them! Alright, anyways. And then you're going to take this and basically just put the positive to positive and your negative to negative. And that's all you got to do for this. It's pretty simple. I'm going to super glue those connections because the one fell out and the one was coming out. So, uh, And this crank... This crank position sensor, which my position sensor is Hall, or I'm sorry, is VR, which has the two wires coming out of it. There are ones with a Hall, and it just has a uh, extra ground coming out, and yeah. So you want to ground that to a certain pin on your ECU, but so yeah, wire that into there, and I'll uh, get back to you as soon as I'm done. There we go. I just put some super glue in each of the socket hole right there and right there. And just gonna let it dry, uh, and uh, yeah, that's it. I mean, it's not that hard. I found a picture here. Uh, this is the coil pack on a Subaru. This is exactly what it looks like. And I noticed that on the Subaru, there's uh, numbers. It says one, two, three, four. Um, I really hope that's not the ignition uh, sequence or the like the cylinders but on like on here it says it's one two three four and here it's backwards it's bottom one two three four so I'll find out exactly what that is what what the difference is but um yeah so this is what we're gonna be hooking up next and you're gonna have to find this connector right here it has four wires going into it so I'm pretty sure that's my idle air control valve. I'm pretty sure this is it right here. Pretty sure this one is it. And this one only has three wires going into it. So I need to make sure I don't have any other ones that's the same as this. So as soon as I find it and I know that's what it is, I'll get back to you guys. Upon closer inspection, I now realize that this diagram that I made is backwards. This is actually how it really goes. One, two, three, 
four. That is actually how it's really done. Just wanted to clarify that real fast. Um, and it's a good thing that we got the... Uh, uh, I need to make sure... We need to make sure that these are all connected to the right ones. I'm going to do that real fast. So, yeah, we had it wrong. And we have to go back and redo these wires. I'm pretty sure they're just swapped. So, this is the front wire, back wire, and front... Okay, so this is, this is how it goes. We need to hook up one and four together. One is bottom left and top right. So the blue needs to go from here to here. From he this one to that one. That's all you have to do is just switch these two. These are all good. So basically it goes, it's like an X. It's just like um, blue. And from here, he jumps to this side, blue, green, goes to the opposite side, green. That's all. Uh, real fast, I wanted to point out, um, you're going to want to grab the sensor that goes into your ignition module or your coil pack, which is right here. This is actually my older video. I wanted to make sure this is the one to use. It's got these color wires on it, and we're going to pull this off, and this is what we're going to be using uh, to connect next. We're going to be connecting this this wire uh, who knows where the wire went but it's a brown wire we're going to be connecting into one of these so i'm going to find out which one it is all right next um i'm going to not do the ignition yet because this is the most hard part to do on this i have no clue what i'm doing and there's nothing online that helps me with this so i'm not going to worry about that right now i'm going to actually hook up my wide band to this next so go ahead grab your wide band sensor and inside, you're going to want to grab this, this uh, cable right here. And I'm pretty sure you're going to want to grab the manual that tells you uh, which thing goes to what, what the wires are actually used for. So, And then you're going to find uh, the sensor on here, and then you're just going to splice that into the sensor on there. So I'm going to do that real fast. All right, here's the uh, output. Uh, the <clears throat> wire output signals we got black is ground what else is new red is 12 volt what else is new white is the analog 0 to 5 volt output don't know exactly what that's used for uh, it says orange is narrow band I don't have an orange on my thing so I don't know what's up with that but, uh, and green is digital output. So, this just, this just gets more confusing by the second. So, I'm going to find out what the heck I'm doing before I walk you guys through how to do this. Alright, so. Alright, I got this a little bit more. You're going to want to wire your uh, O2 signal to the green digital output. That's what I got so far. So, I'm going to do that to that. So this is actually really simple. You do not need the white or the brown wire because all that is is analog output and uh, a narrow band simulation. So uh, the output is if you wanted to hook up not only to the to the wide band that's gonna the sensor that's gonna connect there, but you could also connect it to a whole another one. Um, and the brown is just a uh, uh, simulated narrow band output you really don't need that and in here's uh, positive and negative so it's just your output your positive and your negative and the positive can be hooked up uh, anywhere you want I'm gonna hook up my positive with the uh, um, positive in uh, mega squirt their, their uh, 12 volt hookup and I'm also gonna hook up uh, my negative and splice that into one of the negatives going down here so I'm gonna do that real fast all right, there we go. Um, these are the wires we still have to hook up. The ground wires, don't worry about because I mean they're ground wires. And these, this is everything we hooked up already. And then you got the injectors that we hooked up. Next, I'm gonna find out what we're gonna hook up next. But I think we're gonna hook up our uh, air temp and coolant temp stuff. So I'm gonna look up where the coolant temperature sensor is here, and where the coolant temperature sensor is on there. 
this is your um, this is your factory gauge inside your car. The temperature inside your car runs off that, and this is your uh, that goes to your ECU. And these are the two wires you're gonna need: coolant temp and sensor input return, which is the black and white one. I grabbed a whole bunch of extra wiring because I'm gonna have to take this one and I'm gonna have to run this wire to like three different sensors so I'm gonna put some wire on the end of that run it to that sensor and run it to the other sensors so I'm gonna hurry up and do that real fast and also you connect the yellow wire to the black and yellow wire coming out of here and the solid ground goes to the sensor return next we're gonna be doing the intake air temperature and my intake air temperature is uh, connected with my uh, intake air temperature and mass airflow sensor it's all together so I need to find out exactly which one is my mass airflow sensor which I have no idea which one it is that's because I think it's still uh, it's actually still on the car so I'm gonna go f see if it's still on the car real fast and it is still on the car um, it's connected with all these wires right here it is this connection right here and you see in here we have a I don't we have a green a black and a pink and I don't know what color that is but it's a three pin and I need to find out exactly which one is my temperature so I'm gonna go ahead and do that real fast well what do you know the um, mass airflow sensor that's on these things uh, don't have IAT sensors so I'm gonna have to buy a IAT sensor for this setup and any just buy one and you can just plug it right into your system it's not hard make sure you get one with the pigtail and then uh so yeah we're not going to be hooking up oh, what wire was it the orange wire this one right here we're not going to be hooking this one up just yet but we will eventually uh next one we're going to do is the throttle position sensor all right here is my throttle position sensor at least I hope so and uh, you can go ahead and cut all three wires because all three wires are going to be used I'm pretty sure the light blue goes to this one or this one I'm not sure but I know the black which is your uh, black with white stripe which is your sensor return uh, that goes to all the grounds on the sensor return so you're just gonna have to wire in another uh, one of the red wires that I was talking about and that's gonna eventually connect to this along with everything else so I'm gonna go ahead and just wire the red wire into this so I know this wire is done and then worry about these two in a bit. Alright so this is how I wired up my uh, throttle position sensor red is your 5 volt V ref which is also I'm pretty sure it's just a type of uh, 5 volt connection um, that's why I just connected it to red because red usually means power white is your uh, throttle position sensor signal which is the actual signal of where your throttle is and then black is your sensor return or ground which black is always ground so you don't have to worry about that if your throttle position sensor on your mega squirt doesn't work just switch these two around switch the blue to red and the gray to white and that's it all right let's move on to the next thing you can go ahead and zip tie off these four cables the tan ones with lines on them um, these are spare pin cables I have no idea what they're used for maybe they'll be useful later on but for now all I know is we don't need these so you can stick those down there that's everything we have done this is all we have left to do actually this black and white wire we don't have to do actually we do actually yeah we'll do this next alright so we're gonna take all the red wires and connect them all to here and we're gonna run an extra red wire so when we hook up our idle air control valve um, we can hook it up to there so let's go ahead and do alright so there we go all the red wires are connected All right, so there we go. All the red wires are connected to the uh, multi-colored black, the black and white one. Keep on forgetting what it's called. And then I got this extra red wire connected there for the um, intake air temperature. So, yeah. All right, we only have a few more left, so I'm going to look over these and see which ones to do next. All right, last 
Well, not the last thing to do. We do have the... Oh, where did it just go? I just had it. Is this, yeah. This one, we do have the fuel pump relay to do. Uh, fuel pump relay we're going to do last because we'll go outside for that one. But we have uh, idle air control valve steppers and the uh, spark ignition, which I <laughs> still have no clue what to do with that, but I'm just going to guess my butt off with this one. But worry about that later. So you're going to need these four wires for your... Uh, Stepper control, I'm pretty sure. Or maybe not. I think I'm missing a wire. I'm not sure. But anyways, uh, I'll find out all, all the wires that we need. It says there's two green to uh, two um, blue, I think. Green, white, green, red. What is L? I have no clue what L means. But, um, yeah, so I'm pretty, they say on the wire, so I'll find out which ones they are. But we need to find our idle air control valve uh, thing, which is this right here. I know this is it for a fact. And uh, we can sort of wire it up. It'll be pretty easy to do. So we'll do this first. So upon further inspection, we actually have two types of uh, um, idle air control we can do here. We have PWM, which is single wire or we have stepper control. Mine is not stepper control, so I don't need these wires. So I can cut these wires back here uh, real fast. All right, so now that we got all those cut back, the only wires we have left are, as soon as, if I can grab them, these right here, no. This one, this, no, this one, this one. And in our idle air temperature, which is on the other side get out here. Alright, so now we have our idle PWM fuel relay and spark. So we're going to do the idle PWM. And I cut my idle air control valve connector off. You don't, you're, you can cut it off. Um, you're going to want, actually I don't even think, let me see here. I'm not even sure if I can use this on my mega score because I think we need um, MS3X and I only have MS3. MS3X is like a hundred bucks more and I'm not in the mood to pay that. So I'll hook up what I can to this and uh, yeah so we're going to use the 12 volt from the fuel pump relay which is right here. So that'll be connected somewhere along the lines of the purple wire so I'm going to do that real fast and I'm actually just going to run red wiring to it instead of uh, splicing into it because running red, red wire would be a lot easier so I can't find anything about this thing on Lime so I'm just going to wire up the white to the PWM uh, idle which I'm guessing is the control the fuse 12 volt is which is spliced into our uh, fuel relay because that's also 12 volt and then we have ground, which I'm just going to wire um, a uh, red wire to uh, a ground. And uh, that's it. And if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. I mean, I never, I unplugged this when I first turboed the car. And I can just use settings and mega squirt to bypass this. But it'd be cool if I can get this thing to work. And we're left with the spark wire, which is the last one we have left to do. And somehow we wire it into one of these wires. Um, I'm not sure which one to wire it into. So I'm going to do some research and find out. I actually found out what uh, this is for. This right here is actually my knock sensor on my uh, engine. So I'm going to go pull that off and fix that real fast. This is the knock sensor. Yeah, Looks just like the same. Um, and all this does is that end plugs right into there. And that plugs into that. So I don't think there's a something on here for knock sensor um, I'll look online to make sure but well of course there's not because we only have one wire left um, so I'm gonna hook this back up just so I can have it hooked up to my original ECU so if a code comes up for knock I'll be able to find out alright so I got that drying with super glue in there and I am gonna hook it back up to here because uh, the um, uh, ECU does not, oh, 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 my 
things falling. The 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 mega squirt, at least without not me taking it apart and wiring it up, doesn't have a um, uh, knock sensor built into it. So I'm just gonna put that back on the original. Now I'm gonna go back and do some more research on the spark. All right. Well, I don't know what to do about the. Um, spark and I'm not going to worry about it now because it's late and I just got back home um, from Home Depot I was grabbing some stuff for my engine and uh, yeah so I'm going to clean all this wiring up with some zip ties I'm going to show you what it looks like when I'm done uh, I'm not going to electrical tape wrap this yet just in case there is something wrong with all this I don't want to electrical tape at all and then find out oh you know something's broken or something's messed up stuff like that so all right, well, this is most of it. You got your wideband O2. Move that over here. This is the only one I didn't get to zip tie together because I ran out of zip ties. Your cam angle sensor or your, your attack sensor. Uh, all your sensor grounds. Your... Who knows what that is. What is that? I think that's idle air control. This is... I think throttle position, just we got a whole bunch of them, so, yeah, and then we have some leftover wires, which that stuff still needs to be hooked up, but, yeah, hooked it up with the actual regular harness, so there we go, there's the mega squirt harness, it's literally just a whole bunch of nothing, but that whole bunch of nothing will make my car work, so I'm going to go stick this outside, and that's, we're basically done for now, so. Alright, and that's how you hook up a Mega Squirt with, with a EJ22 harness. Hope you guys have a nice day.